Hello everybody, my name's Charlie and today I'm going to show you how to change the keys if you have broken keys on this keyboard mechanism or I'm actually going to show you today how to clean and make sure you don't get any stickiness or keys sticking down so to say when you play. Um, they're weighted, it's a weighted keyboard, so keys will tend to sink if the mechanism isn't, isn't in top, tip top condition. So let's see what we can do anyway, right? So I'll put it over here. It's uh, This keyboard mechanism is from a CME UF88, which is um, a Chinese keyboard. Probably that's why the mechanism is not that great. Um, but the rest of the keyboard is quite um, a nice keyboard and it's all aluminium and all that so I won't, I won't spend my time itching the keyboard right you've got one two three four five six seven it's an eight oct octave keyboard right each one of these plates one seven plates holds an octave so what you do is you undo the four screws of each plate. Mine were pretty loose, just so I could uh, look quickly. Right, you lift the plate up, you can see. I'm lifting the plate up, and there's your plate. By the way, you need a screwdriver, you need some paper for this job. Um, that's it, and uh, a drill. This drill is an 8mm drill, very important. Uh, just over a quarter of an inch, but it's very, very, extremely important. This is the most important part. Oh, also, grease. There we have our grease. Okay, this is a multi purpose grease, and it's made by Granville, which are a very good make. Um, okay, so we've taken that plate off. Underneath that plate, you will notice a, a very small black grommet, long grommet. And what you need to do is you need to lift that grommet. I don't, want to get, I don't want to get my ball head in the way because you won't see what I'm doing. You need to lift that grommet, right? So you lift the grommet up. Now you've got the grommet. Okay, that's the grommet. Okay, that will enable you to push the keys back. Okay, next step is to turn the keyboard over. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> Remove the keys. So we start with doesn't matter which ones you start with, really. But when you're putting the keys back, you will have to put the whites in uh, after the blacks. And the blacks will not come out without the whites being taken out. Now we've got the whites out, we can take these, this little black out. Just bend that there. Take these few black ones out. Okay, there we go. And there's one there. And there's one there. And okay, you should have four of those, right? Now, so you should have 12 missing keys at the moment. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got this one to do as well. We'll take that off. I'll try and keep the nut out of the way. Um, and then we will pull this one back. Thanks. Okay, right, you need to take the plate or just loosen, say, the three screws. In this instance, I'll take the whole plate off. This is the small little plate at the end that holds four keys uh, down on the keyboard. Um, so I've taken that off. But if you're down here and you're doing the octaves down here, obviously you will you'll take your octave out, the one plate, and you only need to do, undo three screws and just, just move it that way, a little, just a little, uh, it's just so you don't get things mixed up, just trying to keep things in order, so now we're going to wipe in there, there's any old grease, and stuff like that, now I've taken that plate off, I can take this key out, come on, okay, take, take it, scrum it out as well, Take that key out and then 
you may have to you may have to just twist down the bottom here to get to it. Now. That's it. Okay. Let's do it really carefully, right? Put this grommet back to, to keep things in order, right? And put this plate back in there. This is just to keep things in order, so you don't get things mixed up and stuff all spoiled all over the floor, bits and pieces. Right, now these screws here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got one more key to come out, sorry. Seven eights, right? So you undo these eight screws. These are holding the hammer. These screws are, are holding the hammer action up against the bottom of this chassis, which the keys obviously go on top. So you take these, anyway, you take these eight screws out, I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. I should have put a bit of music in the background, I think, but never mind. No, maybe not. Uh, take that off there like that. And take this one off there like that. Okay, folks. Then this black plate here, this, this black plate here, you don't take off these back four screws. Leave them where they are. Okay? You only want the front ones on the black plate. I made that mistake by taking the back ones off. It doesn't do anything, but the thing is, there's uh, your felt cushion here that gives you the lovely smooth action of the keys as you play in. That's attached to the back to black, this black plate by glue. You see, so you don't want to be pulling that about basically and distorting it. Right, now we've got that far. Make sure there's some little square lippets for the go over the ends here. I hope you can see this. If you take out your keys you'll see them. Make sure you don't lose them and everything must go back. You must not leave one rubber grommet or anything out or the action will not feel right compared to the other keys that are right. Um, on here you have, you don't lose these, look. I'll put it on the screwdriver and I'll show you it. Okay, can you see it? It's a little triangular white cap. Very important. Okay, because if you lose that, your keyboard will just sound noisy. Right, so because that pushes the actual mechanism down to, sound, to make the sound on the rubber suction cups on the circuit board that's way underneath. Right, so now we've taken those off, we can now push. Just push down these black things. Be very careful here, right? Remember, you are talking about a mechanical mechanism. You want to be very careful. You don't want to bend stuff. And I just pull her out real slow. There she goes, okay? Now there she goes. I just put that there. Have a look at that. That's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> that is brilliant. So you can see one stuck already, right? So I'll show you what we're going to do. A white triangle, the cap has just come off, we'll put that back. Okay, let's do this real simple, right? Move that out of the way and put this here. Now, at the side here, you will see a rod. There's a rod that goes through and holds all these hammers, all these hammers in place, okay? So, what you do is this you'll push the rod through, okay, just push it through, let me fry it, you won't damage anything, push through with the screwdriver, try and keep these hammers in place where they are, okay, very important, and do this on a carpet, do this on something soft as well, there you go, that's the rod, right, that's the rod, that holds, it, holds all the hammers in place, right, the hammers are still in place because they're in between, little black straight pieces that are quite tight against the hammer. So you can leave this here, right? The idea is so you don't lose stuff and it's just an easier job than having them all pulled out. The first octave I did, I pulled them all out and I thought, 
you know, it, took, it was a bit of messing around, then I sussed out a cleverer way how to do them quickly. Right, now this rod here is made of aluminium. What you're going to do is you're going to take the 1200, don't use anything else, it must be 1200 or more. Okay? Not too fine, obviously, it'll take too long, but 1200 is fine, okay? Okay, what you'll do is, you'll rub. Hello, baby. That's one of my cats, he's called Jackson. That's another reason um, I personally like to do it bit by bit because when you've got cats, they can, you know, start making things fly all over the place when they're running around. Okay, so we're going to do that, right? So we, that's nice and smooth now, real smooth, okay? This is going to be a good job. I have three keys sticking, by the way, on this end bit. But the thing is, I, I will mention, if you um, if you have one key stuck on this board, you must do the whole operation. You must do 88 keys, because the thing is, if you don't do 88 hammer mechanisms, you will get problems in the future, I promise you. You must, um, you must do them all. Don't just try and do one or two, and then put the keyboard all back together. You're just going to be taking it apart all the time, every six months. And this keyboard tends to, it won't once I've done this job, but the reason why these keyboards tend to get sticky, the hammer mechanism, is because people store them in places and they need to be played. Yeah, the keys need to be on the move, do you know what I mean? Um, or they just get sticky and sort of seizy. Okay, right. Especially in cold storage. Right, now... Okay, there we are. So we've got all the hammers there. Let's keep them all in order. It's really important, this bit. Keep them all in order, right? You've got your nice little... You're getting everything in order, okay? Now, what you'll do is you slide out one... Take out one hammer. What you do is you, you pull back, you pull on it, really slowly, and just come up as this plastic bit hits the end of the black housing. I call it the black housing, right? Of the keys, the housing of the hammer keys, right? Just lift up. He's out. Okay? Or well, she's out if you're a bloke doing the job. Right. Um, now, take this drill, this 8 miller, okay? And place it in the hole. Can you see what I'm doing? Place it in the hole. It must not drop through. It must not sort of drop through, like if you're holding it like that and it drops through, it's too big. Right? And what you do is, you just need to do this. Just twist. You see what I'm doing? You see what I'm doing? I'm trying to keep my eye on the, on the, on the, what's on the screen, because that's what you're going to see. But there you go, right? Twisting it. Right? And you must do it against the drill cutting edge. In other words, not that way. You do it that way. Sorry, you do it that way. Yes, that, it is that way. Um, towards cutting edge. And then get that nice and loose, okay? Like that. So there's no plastic or anything on the floor from this. You haven't damaged it. You haven't damaged it. Okay, I've just lost the... This is what I mean about the white caps. There it is. Right. Okay. So we've done that now. And as you'll see, when I now put this in here, and if I let go, if I let go, this should swing at least, let's say, seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, right? One, two, three. Okay. Um, Seven times would be fine, but it will probably swing about 12, 15 times minimum. Okay, so then you place this back. So you so you lean it like you did when you took it out. And you just drop your hand down and snugly put it in its gap. Okay?
last one. Here we go. Last one. I'm so glad this is over. It, it, it takes a long. It takes. It does take to do all keys. Probably a couple of hours or a few hours, but you know, it's worth it. All right. I'm going to stress again. Don't just do one or two because they're sticking. You need to do them all. One, two. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get like where that drops. Right, hang on. Let's try again. One, two. <coughs> Keep it all straight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's all right. And as I turn the rod round, see how loose that is. I'm turning the rod round, and the hammer isn't going up in the air or lifting up or anything. Both ways, right? On this rod, there's a this groove. There's a groove on this rod. There's two grooves on the on each rod, right? That you'll be taking out. Let's just slide that back in there first. There's two grooves on the rod that you'll be taking out. You'll see them as you, when you take them out. There's two grooves. One, two, on either side of each other, right? When you lay the grease on now, which is what we're going to do now, we're going to put some grease on, and I mean minimum. Seriously, I mean minimum grease, right? Because grease can make things sticky. I mean, grease is sticky. Right, there you go, right? So what are you doing? Okay, get there. There you go, now. That's it. I, took, I, I wear silver rings normally, but I took them off because I didn't want the confusion. You know, too much silver in front of the camera, sort of thing. <laughs> right, there you go, right? That's really nice and smooth. Now, then grooves, what, what you'll do is, if you get another dab now, and just run it along one of the grooves, put your thing back in there, and then run in another groove. That will serve as grease for the mechanism over the months and years as it's been used. It was, it's sort of leakage. I presume so. I mean, that's why I presume those grooves are there. I am get that is sort of guesswork, but anyway. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it all back together again. Okay, so now you like you put your rod through the hole and then just wiggle and just wiggle the just lift up the first hammer. Don't make these come out of the the plastic black housing, okay? Then you go along, next one, then you go along, lift the bit. Next one, poke the rod through. Oh, too much, right? Lift a bit. Poke, poke the rod through. Go along, lift a bit. Mm. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There you go. And lift this one. Like that. And then lift the next one. And we're getting there. Mm. That's it. Getting there. That's it. Another one. And the reason why those grooves are there, um, I feel, is because when you push this rod in, you're pushing most of the grease. Because the rod's very tight within these holes on the hammers, you're, you're losing grease as you push it through, as you'll see. It's all greasy at this end bit as it's coming through. Right? So, that's hence the reason for the grooves because they won't come through they will stay in the grooves and as you play the keyboard over the months and years and the keyboards in warm atmosphere and things like that that grease will slowly keep everything running smoothly in that area right there you go and she is all back together again okay now obviously this is important because you don't want to put it all back together and find that it's not, not happening Check all these, make sure they're all there. Always keep sort of checking things. Uh, right, this one here, if you lift it up like that and let go, it's got to bounce. It has to bounce. It mustn't just go, or, it's got to bounce, right? Like, you can hear it. Okay, next one. Next one. There you go. Beautiful action. Beautiful. Sorry, my fingers out the back there. That wasn't a sticky. There it goes, see? 
okay look at that lovely lovely <laughs> god loves to keep your fingers away there you go look. beautiful you turn it upside down they all fall down like that stay flush they must all be flush and the white keys and the black keys will be different black keys will be flush as the because the black keys and the white keys the hammer shape is different and that way so you see how it just drops lovely <laughs> right okay now we know we know now let's pull this over we know now that this mechanism we've got to wipe my hands we know now that our mechanism is really really like when it comes out of the factory really you know smooth and no stickiness or anything those hammers are really loose so I'm going to move this up a bit like that okay so where are we okay now to get it back in pull the keyboard towards you <coughs> okay you see what I'm doing and you'll see the gaps that the hammers go through put them through look at the front and bring the white hats the little white hat grommets well, I've lost one I've lost a little white hat grommet where is it there it is okay put that on. make sure they come through the little square hole at the front and then hold it in place and what you've got to do is while holding it in place just put a couple of screws in the front. Where you took those screws out, you were holding the hammer. Okay? I'll show you when I turn it over, right? What I did was I put another one screw in there. Right, so now you put those all the eight screws back into their prospective positions. Okay. This is good stuff. Oh, I can't believe it. I only have to do four more keys and the whole thing's done. And back in the black plate, obviously, remember the black plate it had the eight screws on it. You only take out the front four. Sorry, the back four. My mistake. You only take out the back four. That's with the keyboard facing you. These four leave, those four take out. Front four take out, back four leave. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I'm only stressing that because if you damage this felt, where are you going to get it from? Right, if you start ripping this felt up, mm -mm, you can forget your met you can forget your action because you're going to have no action. Right, <laughs> right. Now you can give these a little wipe, obviously. And what you do is you see, oh, these have got springs. Very important extremely important it, they've got little springs uh, can I get this near the camera can you see that little spring there a little tiny spring there right and that laps out oh, that connects to a, a little shaft and there's another little shaft on the bottom so as you do it you make sure the spring goes into the two shafts okay so it's nice and sturdy all right got like that Okay, now put the blacks in first. The blacks will go on these white. You see these white caps here? These white caps, one, two, three, four, five, on each octave, right? The, 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 the blacks will go there. So because they're set back a bit, obviously their mechanism is slightly different or they're working the way they work. The positioning. Positions like make sure you get those in the ground, those two things right, the two ends right, in the spring. So we're gonna, so you put it in the square holes at the back, and you push forward, push forward, and then you've done it. So in the holes at the back, push forward, and try and keep them forward all the time. So we've got another one here, make sure that spring, remember, is in position. Here we go, we're getting there. Springs okay. 
and the last one. Right, remember this one, you tw you're going to have to twist it a bit to get, uh-uh, you've got a spring missing. Okay. Okay. Put that in there. Now, you have to twist this one a bit. Okay, you'll have to twist it a little bit to get it in. It can be a bit tricky, right? Pull that key across. Just sort of make sure it's underneath first. The grabbers underneath at the bottom of the keys. The huggers, right? The little legs. Okay, and get that in. Come on. Get that. <laughs> no, that isn't going down. Oh, I know why. I know why. Remember, remember we took the plate out? You slide because the last key, you won't get the last key in unless you take the next plate along. So the idea is to do is one octave, take the next plate out, ready for doing the next octave. Right, so now we take that plate out, now we've got it in there. There you go, she's in now. Okay, then the white keys. Bit of a puzzle this unless you put them in order. Got to spring out this one as well. So make sure you all make sure you check for these springs, okay? At the back of the key. Alright, really important, alright? Well you won't have a nice bouncy action when you're playing your keyboard. Yeah, I'm gonna just try and get these all in. I don't know what I'm really doing. Um, actually no, everything's going alright actually. It is better to put them sort of down in order in a line. It's just quicker. That's not that one. Uh -uh. Spring's okay. Right. Dip it in the front first, then go back. And then push. That's not the key for that one. Oh god. Hope this doesn't take 20. Minutes. And then that goes in there. There we go. Now push them all forward, get your grommet, your long grommet thing. I don't know what to call it, it just it keeps the keys in place. Stick the squares in the squares. Run your finger along it, make sure it's down properly. Okay. Then your plate, get your plate, put your plate back on. <coughs> and that's it. You screw the plate back on, and that is how you fix all the keys on an SME. Fix all the stickiness and all the keys dropping and not them sitting in their place on the CME UF88. Um, this keyboard mechanism is used in other keyboards too, obviously. So. If you have a keyboard trouble, if you have keyboard trouble and it's piano, piano weighted keys, it's worth having a look because this video might be handy. Okay? It may help you out. So that's it. And the keys are lovely and beautiful. They feel, they feel really nice. Trust me. Okay? I've only got four to do.